jealous of the players in EU who get to go to Disneyland in Paris because like uh, I would I've love never, to go. I've never been to that one. Yeah, and I, I'm like maybe I need to get across the pond for one of these challenges. Top sixteen, it, you know, just it's easy, right? Yes, it I, does. It does look like a beautiful castle, <laughs> the most beautiful castle. I have to see it in person one of these days. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's gonna be easy. I watch these people do this every every other weekend. It feels like that we're doing these. It, it doesn't look too hard. Spo spoiler <laughs> alert: it's very difficult. Yes, but. yes. <laughs> Well, let's see how difficult it's going to be for these players to win this match. We have Ray Liang here over here on player one on the left versus John Viveros on the right. And both of these players, as you can tell from those 28 points up to here round five, these are both players who have gone undefeated. Yeah, really, really good spot for them. If either one of them can come out of this round undefeated, they've pretty much secured their spot in the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not thinking about that, though. They're thinking about winning every game that's in front of them, making sure that you know they have the advantage going into day two. That's mm -hmm. huge as well. We've seen how important it can be and how impactful it can be going first. And uh, I'm looking forward to a pretty sweet matchup here. Uh, Ray Liang is going to be playing Ruby Sapphire while John is going to be playing Emerald Steel. Wait a minute. Did Emerald we... Steel? Yeah, wait. wait we what? just did this. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so th I'm, I'm assuming there won't be Bucky here, <laughs> but no. I mean, it's, it, you can still play the card. I don't recommend it. No, but... I think there's really not a place for that squirrel anymore, which will be interesting then to see what this Emerald Steel deck looks like without Bucky. I think that you might see something that's a little bit more on the aggro side with like Cursed Merfolk, uh, Flynn Rider maybe. Um, of course, course we are probably still going to see the Diablo which we do see here that one drop Diablo coming down and John getting a good look at Ray's hand. Yeah I got a nice little peek at it too. Missed a couple of cards but we saw like Queen of Hearts and a few of the mm -hmm. other cards you know we see Ice Block here as well so uh, you know a little bit of a different type build than some of the, the red blue decks that we've seen here so far but oh look I thought uh, we got rid of this. Wow no you know Diablo even without Bucky Diablo is still so good I don't think there's a reason to not play Diablo. Getting the card draw from every time your opponent draws is just too good to not play Diablo so that bird is going to stick around. Yeah, bird is definitely the word here. And you see John going ahead and going to draw an extra card here on just his second turn off Ray Liang's draw. Not to mention, he's also got this Flynn Rider in play, setting up for possibly some big turns. I see a Prince John in the hand already for John, too. So if he can get this Prince John ah. into play, he can start setting up a lot of discard and extra draw here. Yeah, now this is interesting. I was going to say, what possibilities does Ray have to banish Diablo? And yeah. look at that. A Cruella de Vil, a nice little card. So she has, on your turn, during your turn, this character gains evasive. That means that Cruella will be able to challenge into that Diablo if she was able to stay on the board. But of course, uh, Let the Storm Rage On took care of that and froze her out of this game. Yeah, absolutely perfect answer from John here. Let the Storm Rage On doing two damage, drawing an extra card here. He's going to draw an extra card again mm -hmm. off Ray Liang's turn. Turn. He's questing up here. Very, very good start for John here so far. Yeah, that card advantage is just going to be huge for John, and Ray is going to need to find an answer for that Diablo. But <laughs> that one answer he did have with Cruella, which was the perfect answer, though, unfortunately not able to stick around for long. Yeah, it is an unfortunate thing about Cruella, the fact that she does have two toughness and dies to most things. But, hey, a Queen of Hearts here, this is a really, really good answer. It's going to go ahead and challenge into this Flynn Rider and take that out. Yeah, now he will have to discard because of Flynn's ability. Um, the player, any time that Flynn gets challenged, that player must discard a card. And it looks like he chose to put a Sisu into his discard. Yep, and that Queen of Hearts is going to get to stay around since Flynn Rider only has... One strength there, uh, but the discard is going to start. Unfortunately, the Prince John wasn't mm. in play for John here, but this is another really powerful turn here. Diablo is going to go ahead and sing Let the Storm Rage mm -hmm. On. I've never heard a bird sing a song like that. Like like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Singing from the icy mountaintops, yep, bringing the snow down on that poor little queen of hearts. Deb's going to follow it up with a Curse Merfolk here uh, as well, too. Really good start here for John. Yeah, and that Curse Merfolk is one of my favorite Emerald cards, really. It's a great card. Uh, it only costs one ink to play. Quest for two. It's only zero one, but it, it's just such a good card. And I, that's another card I don't think that you'll ever see an Emerald deck be without. 
And here we see Ray kind of getting put into the squeeze just a little bit. We've got Diablo that's been sitting around for a little while. Uh, no answers in hand, apparently, for it. Uh, doesn't have another Cruella de Vil to take care of it mm -hmm. with Evasive. So this Diablo has just kind of been online and drawing extra cards a bunch here this turn. Flying away with all the cards. Yep. And then we've got, uh, like I said, Prince John as well here, which could set up, you know, any other card draw stuff. It doesn't look like John has any more discard effects here, but doesn't mean that he won't top deck them later in this game as well. So, Yeah, I know he has that sudden chill, but I'm not sure what other discard uh, cards he may have in his deck. It's really interesting because even though we don't have the Bucky engine going, which was such a huge thing, as everybody is well aware, um, there still is uh, some discard aspect to this Emerald Steel deck. Yeah, you still run into just Ursula. That's always been a really good yeah, one Yeah, there's as an well. Ursula, yeah. Yeah, then there's cards like, uh, you've seen Daisy Duck make an appearance in some of these decks. I love that. Speaking oh, hey, of... Speak Speaking of Daisy Duck, there she is. She's a great card. Um, I love the art on this one, too. Super fun. I like how she's kind of got this, like, spy vibe a little bit. Every time she quests, the the opponent has to discard a card. <laughs> spy vibe. I kind of got, like, a Haunted Mansion vibe. Oh, Haunted Mansion vibe. Yeah, that's good, too. Yeah, like, she's, like, <laughs> you know, going through the library at night. She's like, who's there? You hear some noise or whatever. They're trying to figure that one out. But, yeah, this is huge for John here because it makes... Ray discard a card. He's going to draw an extra card here off the Prince John. Then he's going to draw an extra card off Ray drawing for his turn. And, yeah. and, and I, I feel like I'm saying draw a card draw a lot cards. here. Yeah, yeah. But that's what this deck does. Yes. Steel. You know, a lot of these characters aren't going to be able to stand alone and win a game by themselves. But when you start to put all this stuff together, it starts to put Ray into quite a bit of a squeeze here and trying to keep his hand prevalent enough and yep. keep up in cards. Would you say John is putting the pressure on? Oh, absolutely. Pressure like that's going to drip, 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 like it just won't stop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but really he is putting a lot of pressure here on ray he hasn't been able to really keep any characters on the board yeah and so when you look at the lore differential here too it's kind of telling right like john's at nine ray's at zero but for anyone who's ever played with ruby sapphire or played against mm. it you know that's not the name of the game they are not questing too often early in the game they're not really there to keep up with lore early. What they're going to do is they're going to try to get some ink advantage. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's only been how far, you know, how far I'll go. He hasn't gotten super far ahead with the the ink advantage here like you normally have against John. But yeah. he's just looking to play the bigger, more impactful cards. You know, something like Be Prepared is going to be really big. If he has, you know, Sisu on ice. Sisu, is, right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if he has a Sisu, if he has a Maleficent, um, yeah, there's, there's some big cards that could be coming down later, but we haven't really seen, like you said, a lot of those ramping cards. We haven't seen a Fishbone Quill. We haven't seen a One Jump Ahead or a Mickey Mouse Detective. So uh, he hasn't really been able to increase, get that ink advantage over John. Yep, and that brawl there, nice and timely, going to take care of that Diablo. Look, look, the Diablo's already really done its job. It's, yeah, yeah. it's quested a bunch, it's drawn a bunch of cards, but brawl the, is the first step for Ray to get back in the game. You see that Maui, nothing really great from the challenge. And here right now, I love running a Maui into, into a curse mode folk, but yeah. You, you do what you got to do. <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to get these cards out, but maybe there's a chance that Ray can kind of time this at some point in a game where he either loses the last card he doesn't care about or maybe plays the last card he's hanging out and, kill, and then challenges the curse mode folk and deals it there. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that in time in this game. Yeah. I think what's really unfortunate is because he only has three cards in hand. That's probably one of the reasons I would suspect that he didn't challenge into Curse Merfolk because Curse Merfolk, again, forces you to discard a card from your hand and would leave him with just two cards <laughs> and really just not leave him in a good position. Yeah, and we see here uh, oh. Daisy, Daisy Duck goes ahead and quests as well to get another card from Ray's hand. He also draws, John draws another card off the French John here. And he's going to go ahead and start cleaning up this board and progressing even harder. I was going to say, how much yeah. ink does Ray have next turn? I think that's what John is thinking about. I think maybe yes. he'd be going, yeah, that's oh, what he's, he's yeah. counting the he's ink. He's counting the ink, yep. He's yep, he has six ink. Wait, wait, wait. We're going we're we're to we're we're pump the brakes here. If you're going into seven ink, we're going to chill out here, and I'm going to be prepared to not get completely blown out by this card. Yeah, that's definitely something you have to be careful of when you're facing off with a ruby deck because you want to make sure you keep some characters in hand to put down right away. But we did see that Strength of Raging Fire, which is such a fun card. Uh, it's from Mulan, the, the song. And One it's, of my favorite songs, by just, the way, in all of Disney. It's so good. And yeah. I loved how it, it, you know, very on theme with, you know, you have the armies and that Strength of Raging Fire does one damage for each character you have on board. So able to take Grandma, poor Grandma Tala off. Yeah. A lot of my favorite ones here, too. How Far I'll Go, another personal I favorite. I love that player. one. Yes. The art on that one is so beautiful as well and on how far I'll go. And I love that they decided to make a playmat. Now, 
what's going on here on John's okay. side of the board? Well, so, this, so this is pretty cool. So John decides to not quest here, and that's actually going to be game because if he can't challenge here. John was at 14 lore, so that yes. was 2, 4, 6, yep. up to 20. Game over. Game over. Wow. That was a really interesting. All right, so I forget who went first in the first game. Did you catch... I think it was John. <laughs> now I feel like I'm on the spot. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Oh, it was Ray. Yeah. So John is going first. Which, or no, sorry. There is an ink down on yeah. Ray's side of the board. So yeah. he just didn't have anything to play on, on turn one. So. Oh, there we go. There's that one jump ahead. There's that, that one jump ahead. Uh, I know there's there's some, uh, I, would, I wouldn't call it conflict, but, you know, the different people like one jump ahead versus Mickey Mouse Detective. Look. Liam and I were talking about that earlier today, but one jump ahead is, is such a good card. See, look, here's how I feel about it. <laughs> Right, I like one jump ahead personally, and then mm -hmm. there's other people that like the Mickey Mouse, and it's okay to be wrong. They can it's just be wrong. <laughs> all right, it's, it's okay. They don't always have to be right. So you can play whatever you want. Whatever, whatever. you want. Yeah, you, you like the character, that makes sense. I'll, I'll just keep my one jumps ahead. Yep. We don't see a fishbone quill in hand. I'm not sure how many Ray is running, um, but yeah, hopefully he's able to, to ramp up. I do see the Hiram Flaversham, which is going to be great to get that draw engine going, but... Yeah, you see, you see Ray really thinking about a brawl here this turn, and I can, yeah. I can actually get behind this. Let's go ahead and take out, possibly just take out the Shmi, because you're not going to get value off Flavor, uh, have or some if you play it uh, right here. And maybe you can start to set up for something in the future. You know, it does stick around. You don't have to draw the two cards right away, but it looks like he's thinking about uh, inking it as well, which I'm, I'm a big fan of that here. We don't have a lot of he ways to use it. Yeah, and he doesn't have any items on board for Flavisham, so. And I like this here. He goes in and brawls down the Robin Hood, and that might mm -hmm. look weird to you, right? Like the other, you know, should be quest for two here. It's a 3-3, three, three, but. Well, we're, Brawl we're, can't take out Smee. Yeah. It's uh, strength two or less, and Smee is three strength, so. Yeah. <laughs> but that keeps that shift Robin Hood, like yours. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I was going with that. I, 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 yeah. I, yep, I, yeah, I saw where you were going. Yeah, that's me though. Such a strong. That just goes to show how strong that card is because it is a, a turn two card, quest for two, a three strength, three willpower card. It is a, a great, especially in this matchup, that it can't be brawled. Uh, Madame Medusa could take care of it, or uh, there are definitely other cards, but. Yeah, I do love that a lot of these decks are playing Shmi even without captains, so it's just going to be mm -hmm. taking the damage, and you just don't care. Like, right. It's one yeah. of the best cards on rate in yes. the history of Lorcana, so. Oh, there's, oh, the, fishbone there's the fishbone quill. I'm sure that Ray is very happy to see that. So it looks like Ray's going to go ahead and put another card into his ink. And uh, you see that card that's getting kind of passed around his hand right there. That's a be prepared. That is going to be very, very important here. So mm -hmm. looking over to John, do we have an Ursula? Is there an Ursula anywhere around, floating around? Because that would be pretty big here to be able to take the song out of Ray's hand. Because if not, he's getting prepared next turn. I think there's five ink right now. There is five so ink, and he has quill. that quill. So he could play be prepared next turn, which I'm sure he's likely thinking about. Another Smee coming down. That's a lot of lore with the Cursed Merfolk. Both of those Smees on the board. Uh, it might uh, kind of force Ray's hand here to answer that side of the board with that be prepared on his next turn. Yeah, and if you're John here, you gotta kinda you got to kind of figure out how bad is be prepared for me uh, next turn, depending on, you know, can I play more into this? Can I not play more? So you see him play the Shmi, maybe not play anything else. And I think that's something he's thinking about. He's like, look, if they don't have be prepared, then I have this huge board that I'm going to win from here. But if they do have be prepared, at least I can come back from this with the few cards that are left over in my hand. So in, in that situation, I like thinking about it like this. It's can my hand recover from be prepared from the spot, the way that my hand is right now? If, mm. it, if it can, if I can recover from it, then I will play around it. Yeah. If what I have in my hand is not good enough to be to be prepared, then I'm going to play into it to, yeah. where, I, to where I win if they don't have it. This was beautiful. As a, a Ruby lover, I, I love to see it. He played be prepared. John said, I have a, this Robin Hood. And then Ray says, well, sorry, I have Madame Medusa, so goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Madame Medusa is there to take out Robin Hood in this deck. It's I love the, him. Yeah, one of the more love impactful it. and really powerful characters in the Emerald Steel deck. And Madame Medusa, showing why it's one of the more impactful cards in the history of this game, taking down that Robin Hood, a brawl taking down that Ursula as well here. And John, we got to get something going here. Oh, it looks like we got another big drop, though. That might be important. Nah, we got a beast, which is great because he does need the card draw. Yeah, this is one of the best plays that John can have here. This beast, if it could stay un undamaged going into the next turn, it's going to draw him an extra card, like you said, mm -hmm. and get him possibly back into this game because now you're seeing kind of what you and I talked about 
in the uh, first game where Ray has an ink advantage and now is going to have the card advantage as well with the Haversum taking care of that fishbone quill. The fishbone quill's done, it's his, done job. his job. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't mind eating it. It's a little bony, but going down. But. Yeah, <laughs> gotta cash it in. Yes. Are you a big seafood fan? I love seafood. Same. Yes, I, I'd eat the fishbone quill if I was, you know, if I was Flavisham. Yeah, one of my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite cards in the game would definitely be on the top of my order. Yeah. That Madame Medusa, though, she's, I mean, I love both ladies in chairs. There's a lot of ladies in chairs in Disney Arcana, actually. But Madame Medusa and Lady Tremaine are two of my favorite ladies. Uh, and you, it's what's interesting is you will see sometimes, like, a split between those two. Like, some people only run Medusa. Some people will have a few Medusa and, or a couple Medusa and a couple Lady Tremaine. They serve some different purposes. Um, here, of course, we do see Ray with the Medusa. Maybe she has, he has some uh, Tremaines in there as well. Also, did you know that Medusa um, from the Rescuers movie, I don't know if, if anyone doesn't know that's where Madame Medusa is from, is from the Rescuers, um, that there's a moment where Penny, the little girl, looks at her in the eyes and freezes. And it's kind of an ode to Medusa from Greek I never mythology. Caught that. Yeah. I never caught that. That just makes perfect sense. <laughs> yes. Today I learned. There All you right. go. <laughs> I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of both those cards as well. Uh, yeah. Bigger fan when they're in my deck, not when they're in my opponent's deck. Absolutely, yeah. yes. I don't like when my opponent <laughs> plays them on me, but I like when I get to play them. And we see the bird making another appearance here. Oh, boy. That's oh, a Sisu, though. And then we appearance. say goodbye to Diablo. Fabulous. Yeah, that Sisu, I think you usually only see maybe one or two copies in the deck, but such a powerful card. Yeah, it's, it's, a no, it's another... Uh, so the way I like to think of this is it's, it's like another copy of Be Prepared. And some of the where you really, really have to sweep up the board. Yeah. Yeah, and then, like you said, just really powerful. Plus, it leaves behind a pretty nice body, right? It's a 5-4 with, mm -hmm. with, a, with, a, with a quest 3. For 3, yeah. And John just singing, let the storm rage on. I'm glad that you're doing that, not me. We want to actually retain <laughs> viewers at home. If I did this, we would lose quite we're, a bit. We're taking turns, though, so the next song that comes out, you can sing it. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll I, I, will, I will not agree to that. <laughs> Uh, that's such a great card, though. Let the Storm Rage on. It's, it, it not only does it do, do the two damage, but it lets you draw a card as well. It's one of my favorite songs in Steel. This is one of your favorite songs. And one of my favorite songs, yeah. Let It Go. I mean, it, it, it won an Academy Award, you know, from Frozen. So, so I'm probably going to get a little bit of hate for this. Uh, Frozen, uh -oh. in my opinion, not one, of uh -oh. the, not one of the better movies. Like, it's, you know, you know like it's, it's in the middle of the pack for me. But, oh. but musically, Music. top notch. Yeah, like, it's got great music. Absolutely top notch. Uh, now, we just saw Ray play a card that I haven't seen in very many decks. Ooh. Dig a little deeper. Or, or uh, here, I'll sing it since you wouldn't sure. agree. Dig a little deeper. I, I, see, like, not only would I not know some of these, I'd be really <laughs> off key. So for chat, that's for you at home. Let, we'll let Rebecca do it. <laughs> Rebecca Quest, Rebecca Sings is yes, more like yes. it. Uh, Tannen listens and giggles. That'll, there be, you that'll go. be more there like it. There you go. So Dig a Little Deeper is a song. It's an eight cost. It's a sing together, which is a really fun mechanic, of course. Sisu can sing it outright just as a solo. But you get to look at the top seven cards of your deck, and you put two into your hand, and the rest go on the bottom of your deck. So another great filtering card in Sapphire. Yeah, and speaking of great cards, Taking Care of Beast there is another mm. madam. But I always talk about this Dig a Little Deeper a little bit. This is the right kind of deck for it, because not only do you have characters that can sing it, but your cards in this deck are so impactful. And a lot of times when we see the, you know, the red-blue decks, the Ruby Sapphire decks struggle, is they get to the late game where they have a bunch of ink, and they only have, like, one impactful card. Like, they have a be prepared, and then their opponent plays some stuff, and then they draw another Fishbone Quill, or they draw yeah. another one jump ahead. But this allows you to find two of your huge hits, right? Yeah. Like, you find Melissa and Dragon, you find Tamato, like, you find this hand yes, that Ray has that, that Ray has, yes. Yeah. A and, fabulous hand. And you're not losing from this point. Yes. Well, I mean, and we talked about this in game one. In game one, we saw John's deck doing exactly what it was meant to do, not Ray's. And here, we're seeing Ray's deck do exactly what it was meant to do. Yeah, and so Ray has an interesting spot here. So he's going to develop his brain here, but he's trying to decide what to do, right? Like, he doesn't necessarily need to cast on the dragons, but what I like here is that he could play Tamatoa, and depending if he has one or two cards left in his hand here, we could add Fishman Quota. So I like just not playing it, not inking it. Yeah. Leave that card in my hand to, to help prevent me from having to discard one of the cards that's really relevant, because one of the ways that John gets back into this game is, let's say uh, he rips Ray's hand apart this turn, draws a ton of cards off that, develops a few more one jobs or whatever, and then all of a sudden we're in a race situation and... Generally, if it's a bunch of cursed murder folks, something that you can win the race or at least try to get ahead. Yeah, let's see here. So Ray is sitting at eleven uh, lore right now, and then he has one, two, three, four, 
five, six on board. Plus, we know he has that fish bone, so that's actually seven if he decides to play it because it gives uh, Tomatoa one more lore if he has an item down. So this is like a two-turn clock here for John. Yeah. Also, like again, I don't think it's going to come up here this game, but... Tamato, you know, you get the item back as well mm -hmm. when you quest. If you were to be made to discard a card, you can discard the fishbone quill, quest the Tamato, put it back in your hand, and do it again. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> did he just draw another Maleficent? I think he I, did. I, on his, for turn, so he has three Maleficents in hand. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, a lot of dragons. It's a yeah. lot of firepower there. And we say goodbye to Robin Hood. Man, that Robin Hood, again, such a fabulous card, but he is, John has not been able to keep Robin Hood on the board. Oh, absolutely. And you can, you can see that what, what really is how this matchup works, right? Ah, like, and that's, that's, that's going to even it up. Ray is going to win and sh show the, 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 